So are you wondering if self-publishing is for you? What are the pros? What are the cons? If so, this video is for you. My name is Kelly Notaris. I'm the founder of KN Literary Arts. We are a full service book studio helping you get from wherever you are to having a book in your hand. So visit us at knliterary.com. I've been a book editor in the book publishing business here in the United States for over 24 years. And I am here to bring you all of the information I learned in that time right here for free on this YouTube channel. So please don't forget to click subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you never miss a video. So today's video is all about self-publishing. I really can't overstate how different it is today to self-publish than it was when I got into the book business about 24 years ago. Things have changed so much due to something called print-on-demand digital publishing. What that means is that to self-publish, you don't have to order pallets and pallets of books to get the per book price down to a reasonable level. You can actually order one book at a time and it will be printed off just for you. What this means is that you, and I mean you, can have a book in the world with really very few obstacles to get there. But is that the right path for you? Or should you try traditional publishing, meaning finding an agent or submitting your book directly to a publisher and hoping that they will take on the publication for you? That is what I want you to know after you watch this video today. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of self-publishing. First, we're going to start with the pros. I mean, number one to most creatives is that you have entire creative control yourself when you're self-publishing. When you publish through a traditional house, you sign a contract that gives them the right to really have the final say on just about everything from editing to the cover design to when you publish it. It's really up to them because they are taking the financial risk on getting the book into the world. So they get to decide based on their experience, what time of year is the best time to publish it, what it should be called, what it should look like, et cetera. Now, most publishers will work with you very closely to make sure that you are happy and they are happy, but when push comes to shove, the creative control is theirs. When you self-publish, it is all yours. Second big pro of self-publishing is that you can get the book in the world this year. So when you work with a traditional house, they have a long lead time. They generally are acquiring books today that they're not gonna publish for 18 to 24 months. So that means that if you have a book ready to go, you won't see it in the world for another one to two years, and that may be too long for you. If you self-publish, you can set the pub date yourself, and it takes much less time to get from manuscript to a printed book. A third pro of self-publishing is that there's no platform or audience requirement to get the book in the world. Traditional publishers want to make sure they are going to make back their investment. So they want to know that you're out there hitting the pavement, talking to people, and people are ready and excited about your book. This is called building a platform. It happens via social media, via speaking engagements. Perhaps you write a column for your local newspaper. There are many different ways that you can be gathering an audience who will be ready when your book comes out. But if you haven't done that yet, it's unlikely a traditional publisher is going to take a chance on you. So ideally, you self-publish first and you use your book as the reason to start talking about you and your thoughts and ideas and story. So your book itself can help you build that platform. If you are able to do that and you self-publish the book and you can sell, let's say, 5,000 copies on your own, Traditional publishers will be beating down your door. They will know you have a book that actually has an audience and you probably haven't been able to find the full audience. They want to help you with that. They will take over the publication of your self-published book. All right. So there's no con there. You do absolutely have future potential of getting a traditional publisher, even if you self-publish today. Okay. So speaking of the cons, what are the cons for self-publishing? First and foremost, you've probably spent your career, you know, gathering wisdom, or perhaps you're telling your own story or telling a story that you've come up with, a, a work of fiction. That is where you've spent your time and energy. You haven't spent it gaining expertise in what sells books. So that is one of the cons of doing it on your own. You don't have expertise around what cover designs actually work. You may love a cover design and think it's perfect for your book, but a traditional publisher would look at it and say, Nobody's going to buy that. We know because we've been 
you know, iterating covers for, for decades and decades, and we know what sells and what doesn't, and that's not going to sell. But you don't have that expertise if you're doing it on your own. Same goes for editing. Boy, editing is so important. Getting other people's input on whether your book is working is hugely critical to whether or not people are going to want to read it once you publish it. And you don't have that kind of expertise unless you hire it out yourself if you're self-publishing, okay? So cover design, interior cover design, um, how to pitch the book, what to title it, um, what colors it should be, all of these things are the stuff of career long investigation for publishing people. So if you have a traditional publisher, they will bring that expertise. If not, you're either flying solo or you're going to have to hire that out yourself. Another con of self-publishing is that for really good reason, the media is pretty skeptical about self-published books. Why would that be? Well, when you go through a traditional house, there are many gates you have to get through in order to get that book published. Many people with deep experience in the book publishing business have to say, wow, this is a great concept. It's very well executed. I can tell people are going to want to read it. It feels saleable. If you're doing it on your own, and again, you haven't been in the book publishing business for your whole career, how would you really know? right? How do you know if your book is actually going to be saleable? So that's where the media will set back and be like, you know what? I'm not taking a chance on self-published books. I'm not even going to look at them because if they were good enough, they would be picked up by a traditional publisher. Now, while that is not always true, there is good reason why they feel that way. Because a lot of times people don't invest in the expertise um, that I was just talking about to make sure the book is great before it gets out there. And that is a lot of books. Many, many books are self-published every year. And for journalists and um, you know different uh, media outlets that review books, to read all of those books, to pick through and find the best ones, well, it would just take too long. So they're going to go with the ones that have already been vetted, the ones that are published by traditional publishers. So that is one of the cons. You're going to have a harder time getting media attention. Now, at the same time, today, you don't necessarily need mainstream media to get your book out there. Social media is a way you yourself can get your the word out about your book. And if it's great, the few people who buy it from you on social media then talk to their friends who talk to their friends and colleagues and family. Word of mouth is the way books are sold. It is so much less frequent that books are sold via media these days, but like traditional media, radio, TV, print, etc., much more often, somebody hears about it on social media, they read it, they love it, they talk about it on social media, they do your marketing for you. All of this goes back to the fact that you have to have an amazing book, which is why I'm going to tell you one more con. The last con I want to talk about is the front end costs. You have to shoulder the burden of all of the costs when you're self-publishing. Now, will you make those back? Maybe, maybe not. It may be an investment in your business, for example. Perhaps you're putting a book out there that really is going to draw people back to your business. My book, The Book You Were Born to Write, is exactly that. I put a book in the world that's about how to write a book, and people come and find us at knliterary.com. And you might have that same plan for your book. But if you're writing a novel, if you're writing a memoir, truly, you are responsible for making sure that all, you know, even if you don't have a plan for how people are going to buy it and you're going to get that money back, you still need to get professional editing. You need to get a professional book cover designer to design your cover for you. You need to get the interior professionally designed. Why? Because why would someone even take a chance on your book if they don't know you and don't already love you if the book doesn't meet the standards of the books they're, they're used to reading from the traditional publishers? Traditional publishers put a book through six to eight rounds of editing every book, even by professional writers who write every day for a living, okay? These are professional editors, not your friends, sisters, daughter who just graduated from college with a degree in English, right? These are people who have been editing books for their entire career. They are looking for content. They're looking that the book hangs together well. They're looking that your character development is great. They're looking that you tie up all the loose ends that a reader needs to see. And that's just the content editing. Then it goes into technical editing, copy editing, and proofreading to make sure that the error count is very low. Every book has errors in it, even after six to eight rounds of editing. But imagine how many more are going to be in it if you don't get any editing or you just get one round of editing from someone who's not a professional. So it's very, very important for you to have a budget in mind for what you can spend to get this book out there if you want people to read it.
It's It can be such a, a, a problem for people because it really does cost a lot to get all of the professional help you need. But if you don't get that professional help, it's unlikely people will read the book. So it's this weird chicken or egg thing. You can go on the cheap and not get that kind of professional editing and feedback and not have people pick up the book and finish it. You need them to love the book and finish it to tell their friends. And that is how books are sold. So if you want that word of mouth, you do have to make quite an investment up front if you're self-publishing. Now, again, there may be something that can fund that, either a GoFundMe campaign. Many people have gotten a lot of success doing GoFundMe or Kickstarter campaigns for people that love them and want to support them and think their idea is cool. And then you have that funding that you can use to get that professional level of quality on your book. Another thing is, as I was saying before, if your book in any way feeds into your business, say you're a coach or a healer of some sort or a massage therapist um, or a, a ther just a, a psychotherapist, you can very much count on having a full practice after you self-publish your book. People will see you as an expert even if they don't read the book because they know it takes a lot of commitment, a lot of motivation, a lot of time, and honestly, a lot of expertise in your topic to get that book out there. When it comes to fiction and memoir, it's a little different. The book really has to be fabulous and it has to be unput downable. The quality needs to be truly excellent. So you will have to decide whether you are ready to make that kind of investment. But hopefully this video helped you see both the pros and the cons of stepping forward in the DIY publishing space. If you have other questions, please drop them below or hit us up at knliterary.com. We love talking to people about books. You can get a free call scheduled anytime. So head on over there now. But in the meantime, let me know, are you going to self-publish? Are you going to traditionally publish? I can't wait to hear. And as always, please, re regardless of your decision today, please keep writing. Writing can be the making of you. It is something that if you're called to do it, there is a reason. And I want you to find out what that is. So happy writing to you.